Welcome to Nature's Edge. Yo, what's going on guys? Coming at you from Finland. Check it out. Here we are. Out in the forest. Good old mother nature. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. I just tried making a video a couple minutes ago walking around, but my shoulders and arms are so sore that I couldn't hold my phone up. And so I'm going to squat down here and uh, just take it easy and su support my poor little chicken arms. Uh, <clears throat> just got back into the gym and definitely went too hard. Uh, yeah, so I was in Seattle uh, working for the last couple months. I just moved out here maybe four days ago. And I moved out here because my partner lives here. We both decided that we don't want to be in a long distance relationship anymore. Uh, it's too tough like meeting up and then leaving and meeting up and then leaving it seems to just get more and more challenging uh, i just wasn't super happy since i went back to the states after leaving finland again and so here i am and i'm applying for my residence permit and we'll see how it goes but anyways i want to answer a question that i've been getting and that's what i eat in a day it's definitely evolved and it's always kind of changing but I'll let you guys know kind of like what I've been eating the last couple months and then um, kind of share my thoughts and feelings about it. And so the last couple months I have been just working pretty diligently all day long. And so I've structured this to just eat one meal a day uh, while I was in Seattle. And so I'd work all day, come home in the evening. Uh, one day it would generally be two pounds of ground beef 20% fat, organic pasture-raised meat. Uh, and the way I would prepare it would be to spread it on a baking sheet and put it in the oven, warm it up. It gets lightly cooked on the bottom and it seems to digest better for me and satiate more so. Uh, I'd put a little like Bragg's liquid aminos like out of a spray bottle or a little sea salt, sometimes a little butter, but very rarely the butter. Um, it was very simple. Uh, beef is definitely like my base as far as, uh, you know, if you're talking about like an elimination diet or a GAPS diet, uh, it definitely works the best for me. A um, few things I noticed while I was strictly eating beef, oh, and to go back, so one day I would eat two pounds in a sitting at the end of the day, and then the next day I would generally eat three, and then two, then three. It seemed to rotate, uh, you know, not perfectly every time I would eat and then stop when I'm satiated and so it looks a little different every day but that's generally how it it turned out uh, I was pretty strict I think I had ice cream like a like a whipped coconut ice cream it's called halo top I had that three times I had chocolate a few times but uh, oh yeah some seafood here and there and then some like some ribeye steaks but generally, I was pretty strict. I was just trying to save money and to just like keep it really simple. And it worked really well for me. Some benefits that I noticed were, were probably like the best bowel movements of my life. I mean, the easiest uh, one or two times a day. I mean, just like f flawless, no gas, uh, no bloating, no indigestion. Uh, you know, even if I'm eating three pounds of meat in a sitting, it doesn't, it doesn't have any uh, negative repercussions. So uh that seemed pretty i mean pretty cool uh i've noticed that like over the two months of being very strict carnivore my digestion got much more robust i mean much stronger um i'm realizing that now that i'm incorporating different foods uh, and then also while i was in seattle uh, i, I want to be completely transparent and completely honest with you guys uh I drank hard alcohol a few times. Uh, I know this probably isn't a big deal to most people. This isn't something I've, uh, you know, I tend to do. I don't, I like to focus on taking the best care of myself. And I used hard alcohol. And then I was also smoking cannabis and tobacco together. Uh, th these were coping mechanisms. I didn't really want to be in this situation that I was in and I was using it as a way to escape and just kind of check out. Uh, and then not only that, but to connect with the other people I was with that were using substances. And so, 
um, you know, it really feels uh, relieving and just peaceful to be out of that situation. Uh, so I noticed that when I drank alcohol, I didn't have the, the hangover that I thought I would. Uh, it didn't really seem to hit me as hard as long as I, you know, drank water, drank enough water. Uh, and then also when I was smoking cannabis and tobacco in the past, it's really affected my energy levels. Like, I mean, it's really messed me up, but I noticed that I was able to, I mean, sometimes even wake up and smoke cannabis and tobacco and still work the entire day. Uh, so I would definitely say that like my tolerance to foods and substances has dramatically increased on a, you know, on a carnivorous way of eating. Um, and just from the foods that I've recently started reincorporating, I can definitely tell that my, you know, my stomach acid or my digestion is much stronger. It's probably stronger than it ever was on a plant-based diet, uh, which feels really good. You know, I'm, I'm not as scared to eat certain foods. Like I feel more free and open to try certain things, you know, if I, if I desire, uh, cause I always know that I can go back to just like a car, you know, like a strict carnivorous way of eating if, uh, you know, if I have any issues, so to speak, but thus far, you know, I've incorporated some foods that I'll talk about in probably the next video, but I haven't had any gas or bloating or indigestion. I've just started incorporating some, uh, some plant-based foods that I used to enjoy on a, on a plant-based diet. And so it feels good to kind of have that freedom and not feel so restricted even though even though i will say that i never once got tired of eating the ground beef uh surprisingly it's just like it's pleasant every single time uh so yeah i've got a little paper here just a uh, little little footnotes so i definitely want to just talk about some of my thoughts and feelings about listening to what people recommend on youtube as far as diets go I know in the past when I was plant-based, I followed people like Durian Rider or um, what's another good example? Or even say like Seminate Nutrition, who I think has an awesome channel and is an awesome dude and what he's doing for him obviously works for him. Uh, but following some of these YouTubers, I was not really listening to my own body and I was ignoring the the very clear signs that it wasn't working for me for example you know if I was to eat a smoothie with like 12 bananas 30 minutes later I'm passed out drooling on myself and just straight sugar comatose and you know I was cycling I was doing the lifestyle you know super active high carb but not only did it not work for me or did I not adjust to it, it just, you know, it got worse over time. So over time I became more incapable of digesting these plant-based foods like high fruit meals, big salads, uh, and like that, just, just the high fiber really. I mean, the fiber was really tearing up my guts. And I see other people eating, you know, huge bowls of like, you know, smoothie granola bowls and stuff like that. And that never once worked for me over the six and a half years I was plant-based. But I would look at these people on YouTube and they would look, you know, so vibrant and so awesome and so healthy. And so I just really wanted to follow them because I wanted to, you know, be like them, whatever. Uh, you know, they're inspirational. But I've since then realized that, you know, not one way of eating is going to work for everyone and so my recommendation to you is that if if something doesn't feel right you've got gas bloating indigestion you know brain fog a big one is not feeling satiated when you eat um, so if you notice any of these symptoms uh, you know don't be afraid to um, you know try out different styles of eating that work um, that are going to work differently they're going to feel differently and so um, 
yeah, you know, I might just dabble around and uh, just experiment for a while and, and see what resonates with you. And I know that, like, say, for example, some people that go to, like, a carnivorous way of eating, they uh, might experience gas bloating and indigestion uh, for a couple of weeks because there's definitely, like, an adaptation period. So keep that in mind, you know, when trying out new diets or adjusting to certain things. There's generally going to be an adaptation phase because of our, you know, the bacteria, like gut bacteria and, you know, the different amounts of fiber and the different macronutrients, et cetera, et cetera. And so, uh, yeah, keep in mind there's an adaptation phase. But, you know, if you're doing something for two years and you're not feeling good, you know, you know, change it. You got to change it. It's uh, not just going to magically get better because for me over time it definitely got worse until I made a big change um, and so yeah I just uh, encourage you to get outside the box and don't try to put yourself in some um, uh, you know live by some label like oh I'm you know just a vegetarian or I'm just a vegan or I'm just a carnivore you know those labels don't work for us um, and a big lesson that I learned while I was in Seattle was that, oh, excuse the siren going by. I guess there's a highway nearby. I guess I can start walking a little bit. Oh, this video might be cut short pretty soon. But anyways, a big lesson that I learned is food is not everything to health. I already knew that, but I really, really got to see it when I was probably, or when I was practicing a way of eating that had, that's probably like, the most um, complimentary for me, but I would still feel like physical stress in my body. I'd get panic attacks, anxiety. Um, I just wasn't feeling good. And that had to do with my living situation. I didn't feel safe. I wasn't comfortable where I slept. I wasn't getting very good sleep. And I'm still adjusting to the jet lag. I literally lay in bed for hours every night away. All right, video cut short, so I'm going to wrap this up. So yeah, there are so many more essential needs beyond food. Uh, being around people that we're able to relate to and just fully express ourselves. You know, if we're feeling limited around the, the, the people that we spend time with, then, uh, you know, we're just going to suppress a lot of stuff that's coming up. Uh, we need to be able to like really pursue our passion. We can't be living a life where we wake up every day when we're miserable and we don't want to go to the job that we're working. I mean, that's just not gonna create um, a very high level of well-being for us. Uh, so, like I said, you know, many more essential needs beyond food and even the ones I discussed. So, uh, keep in mind, guys, if you're not feeling well, uh, it may not be the food. There's so many other circumstances. And so, I'll be coming out with some more videos now that I'm settled, getting settled down here in Finland. Uh, I'll be making some more content. So uh, comment down below with what you guys want to hear and I'll answer them for you. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. You know, like the video, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more content. Thanks guys.